large white rock lay beneath a huge pakor tree at the edge of Monisha's village. By standing on it, Monisha could look over the levee and see the men casting their fishing nets into the pond. Everyone in the village called the big rock Gach Pator, but that was the only thing about it they could agree upon. Monisha's ma knew that her daughter had inherited her own restless mind and shortly before she died of fever asked Monisha to find out what the Gach Pator really was. The Monisha Patora Bond book project really originated in response to the Geological Society of India's uh, mission to produce books in regional languages uh, covering a variety of geological subjects for the children of India. Uh, and when I became a fellow of that society, I learned of this mission um, and thought about whether I could contribute to that and realized that the, the only sort of story I could write related to that part of India which I knew uh, and that was West Bengal and the district of uh, Birbhum where I had spent a student uh, a year or eight months as a student in the 1980s. Um, and the subject of the book then related to that area and a particularly curious phenomenon that occurs there and that's the, the preservation of fossilized wood, petrified wood. And so in the story, um, the uh, story is told through the perspective of Monisha, who is uh, about an 11-year-old village girl. Uh, she's very bright. She has circumstances in her family which are challenging. Um, but she is inquisitive and uh, she pursues an understanding of the fossil wood. The Bunny D told Monisha that there are several different ways of looking at the world. It was not for her to say whether the priest Abdul Kaka or the old Adivasi man were right or wrong, but that the surest way to find the truth is to discover it for yourself. Clearly, that was what Monisha was already doing, asking questions and then looking carefully to see whether the stone locks themselves provided the answer. And through a series of incidents which um, we hope are realistic um, for a village uh, girl, she comes to an understanding um, of how such a transformation from wood into stone can occur naturally. And that's also this process of understanding, and we call this uh, in our programs in, in Bengali, deco bhabo abha deco, meaning to look, to think, and then to look again. She requires for herself a natural explanation using things that she can see around her today, as a detective does. She looks for clues and then she interprets using her knowledge of natural phenomena, what's happening in the box, in, in the uh, Bokushar, in the hot springs, what happens when a kettle boils and mineral deposits are left behind. These observations help her to understand how this process of petrification could occur. বাংলায় মানুষ আসার আগে একটা অতীত ছিল প্রকৃতিকে বোঝার মাধ্যমে কি সেই অতীতকে জানা সম্ভব এই কাহিনী অনেকটা প্রকৃতিকে জানার কাহিনী মনীষা তার সন্ধানী চোখ দিয়ে গাছপাথর পর্যবেক্ষণ করেছে কৌতূহলী মন দিয়ে তার তাৎপর্য বুঝতে চেয়েছে গোয়েন্দা যেমন করে ফেলে যাওয়া বিভিন্ন জিনিসের মাধ্যমে অতীতকে পুনর্গঠন করে মনীষাও তেমনি বর্তমানের প্রাকৃতিক বিভিন্ন প্রক্রিয়ার সঙ্গে গাছপাথরের অতীত যোগাযোগ আবিষ্কার করতে চেয়েছে গাছপাথরের জীবন্ত বনে মনীষার রোমাঞ্চকর অভিযানের মাধ্যমে প্রায় পাঁচ মিলিয়ন বা পঞ্চাশ লক্ষ বছর আগে বীরভূমের যে অবস্থাটি ছিল তাকে মূর্ত করা হয়েছে সেটা ছিল ভূতাত্ত্বিক মায়াসিন থেকে প্লায়াসিন সময়ে উত্তরণের মধ্যবর্তী কালচি সেই সময়ের যে সমস্ত প্রাণী ও গাছ এই কাহিনীতে বর্ণিত হয়েছে তাদের অনেকের জীবাশ্ম বা ফসিল ভারতে পাওয়া গেছে বিজ্ঞানীরা মনে করেন ওই সমস্ত উদ্ভিদ ও প্রাণীকুল তখন বাংলায় বাস করত 
প্রাকৃতিক পরিবেশ তখন সম্পূর্ণ ভিন্ন ছিল and so we went to 16 different um, institutions in um, Birbhum district um, ranging from high schools to madrasas um, to we had um, uh, demonstrations of fossil wood things that they could touch a discussion of why this material was strange in what ways was it like wood in what ways was it like stone how did they think it might have formed had they heard any stories of this um, uh, how it might form naturally talking about um, evaporation, mineralization, um, talking uh, about uh, um, layers of rock, and, uh, digging tube wells and things that, that they might uh, have experienced of a geological nature. And then um, Daini and uh, Snigdo would um, present um, pictures of the uh, animals that um, were living at the time, we think, and that populate the story. Um, and their, their living counterparts today and ask the children why are they different, in what ways are they different and talk about evolution. <laughs> um, overwhelmingly, the best questions, the most thoughtful questions were from the female students. And I don't know whether that was because of Tiny and Baby's involvement and their being approachable as, as women or whether the, the fact that the story has a, a, a female uh, as, the, uh, as the, the, the lead character, as the, the heroine of the, the, the story. But um, it was quite... We took with us to, on various programs Bipu Tarandash, who is a, a local folk singer, who's very well known in the area. When Bipu was with us, um, everything was sort of easier in some way, as somebody very much connected to the story, but also connected to the, to the region. Um, um, songs uh, and music are a very inherent part of Bengali culture, they figure in the story. <laughs> present that to children. There's no reason why bright, motivated children shouldn't be able to uh, understand these processes. And it's important because, just as everywhere, the environment of Bengal is changing, and it's changing due to human activity. And so the impact of, of, of people on the environment of Bengal has been very profound, and that's something that's drawn attention to in the story. <laughs> Let's talk.